Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're starting on the binomial expansion, so we can answer questions from exercise 4a. So this is the binomial expansion for the upper sixth uh, year for the full A-level further maths. Um, the binomial expansion looks like this, 1 plus x to the n, <coughs> where n is any real number. So previously we saw a binomial expansion of a plus b to the power of n, where n had to be a whole positive number. What we can now do is if the if n is any number, so for example a negative number or a fraction number, we can apply this type of binomial formula. <clears throat> be careful that it has to have a 1 at the front, so it's 1 plus x to the n um, in this form. And the formula for this is this thing here. It's going to be 1 plus x to the n equals 1 plus nx plus n n minus 1 x squared over 2 factorial n n minus 1 n minus 2 x cubed over 3 factorial and that keeps on going. So as you can see here we have two um, expressions um, in the x squared over 2 factorial um, expression. We have three expressions with n the x cubed over 3 factorial in it, and that pattern will continue and continue. So what we're going to do here is we're going to expand 1 plus x to the power of 4. In this case we're going to substitute in n as 4, and we're going to keep x as it is. So in this case here we're going to substitute in n equals 4, and simplify afterwards. I'd really recommend that you show you're working in at least one of your lines of um, that you're showing the examiner and then your final answer can be the next line after that. Uh, so every term after this one is going to have a zero in it so we can just ignore it. So this is the fully expanded um, binomial expansion for 1 plus x to the 4. So if it is a positive whole number then this will always be the case um, that it will go down and it will talk tick down until it reaches a zero, in which case every term um, from then on will be a zero. But really what we're going to be looking at here in binomial expansion in the upper sixth is what happens when we have a negative power or a fractional power. We're going to do one more with um, 1 minus 2x cubed. So in this case here we don't just have x, we have minus 2x. So what we're going to do here after we wrote out our formula, is we're going to substitute in n equals 3, but we're also going to replace x with negative 2x. So if there is a negative symbol in between your 1 and your um, and your digit on the right-hand side, then it needs to, um, needs to be included in the x value when you substitute it into the binomial expansion. So 1 minus <coughs> 2x cubed... Here we're going to get 1 plus n is 3, x is minus 2x, plus 3 times 2 times minus 2x squared over 2. Add um, 3 times 2 times 1 times minus 2x cubed over 6. And you'll see that the next term, if we just keep on going down uh, by 1 each time in these n, n minus 1, n minus 2, is you get n minus 3. 3 minus 3 is 0, so we'll stop there. Okay. So in this case here we get 1 minus 6x plus 12x squared minus 8x cubed. Be really careful that your minus 2x is all being cubed. The 2 on the top here needs to be cubed as well. Um, and the negative needs to be cubed as well. So in, this, in the squared term you'll get a double negative um, from minus 2x times minus 2x. On the cubed term, when your negative symbol is cubed, it uh, becomes a negative. So let's have a look at um, one where we don't have a positive whole number as n. Let's give it a negative number this time. So in this case here, we're going to write 1 over 1 plus x as 1 plus x to the power of minus 1. So in this case here, when we use the binomial expansion, we're going to substitute in n equals minus 1, and x can stay as x. So substituting this in, we're going to replace n for minus 1, 
n will be replaced for minus 1, and n minus 1 will be replaced for minus 2. Uh, n will be replaced by minus 1, n minus 1 will be replaced by minus 2, n minus 2 will be replaced by n minus by, by th minus 3, and this will keep on going actually, this will go up to infinity. Okay, and the answer to this um, is going to be 1 minus x plus x squared minus x cubed. <clears throat> so with a negative power you will not get a zero term. This expansion is infinite. So we're going to look here at um, infinite expansions. We're, we're not going to do it for infinity, we're just going to do it for the first three or four terms. Uh, this can only be used to approximate for the original term. So it can't. it's not exactly equal to 1 over 1 plus x. It's just used to approximate 1 over 1 plus x. Okay, so now we're going to move on to 1 minus x to the power of a third, and we're going to state the value for, for x which are valid. Okay, so we'll have a look at what this sentence means at the end, but we're going to now just expand 1 minus x to the power of a third. So, in this case here, that's going to be a cube root of 1 minus x. Um, we're going to substitute it into this formula that we've got here. Um, so we've got n is equal to a third, so the n uh, power is a power of a third. But in this case here, x needs to be set equal to minus x because we don't, we have a positive x in our formula for our expansion, but our minus x is what we actually want to expand. So each x is actually going to have to be replaced by minus x. So let's expand this and we get 1 plus a third of minus x plus a third times minus two thirds of minus x squared all over 2. So just a reminder that when you do um, a third minus one, you get minus two thirds. So that's where the minus two thirds has come from. It's come from this expansion here. <clears throat> and then in the, th the last term, we're going to have a third times minus two thirds times minus five thirds times minus x cubed all over six. And then when you finished writing out all your workings, get your calculator out and write out your final answer. So one minus a third x minus uh, a ninth x squared minus 5 over 81 x cubed. So now we have to deal with this part here. State the values of x for which this is valid. So let's just imagine we substitute in x equals 2. We'll figure this out and I'll tell you how you calculate this in general in a bit. So when you substitute in x equals 2, <clears throat> it looks like this pattern of numbers here are going to continue up and up and up and up. And there's never going to be any point where it just starts to rest down. Um, the, the higher powers of x are going to make the power of 2 increase exponentially. So we don't really want to be able to be substituting in x equals 2. And when we substitute in x equals 2, uh, the expression is not valid. We'll get a negative number there, in fact. Let's try substituting in 0 0.5 instead. So when we substitute in 0 0.5, we're going to get this expression here. Now, as you can see, when we power 0 0.5, it makes the fraction get um, exponentially smaller. So this is effectively a half to the power of a third. Next would be a half to the power of four. <coughs> and that will make all of these subsequent terms from here um, more and more smaller, uh, as in closer to zero. So this expression here is going to tend towards an actual answer. And if we were to calculate this answer, um, we would find that it gets uh, closer and closer to the actual expression for 1 minus 0 0.5 cubed, cube rooted. Okay, so 0 0.5 is valid. Um, a general rule is what we want to happen is for our powers of x to start to converge down towards zero. We want them to um, be a decreasing sequence of numbers um, that will tend towards zero. So they become um, uh, exponentially less useful in our approximation of um, this binomial expansion. So anything that's bigger than 1 or less than minus 1 when we cube it or square it will accelerate the size of the term, diverging the sequence. We don't want that to happen. <coughs> But <coughs> the terms between 1 and minus 1 
when we square, square them or cube them will get increasingly smaller so the sum of the sequence will converge and be valid. So the answer for this is going to be that we want our x values to be in between minus 1 and 1 or we could generally write it as a modulus symbol modulus minus x is less than 1 but remember when you modulus a negative number you can effectively just get rid of the negative so it's just the modulus of x is less than 1 so in general if we were going back up to this formula uh, here it's x has to be in between minus 1 to 1 so that is an answer that we'll see time and time again. <clears throat> All right, then, let's have a go at this one here. We've got 1 over 1 plus 4x squared, So and state the values for which x is valid. So let's turn this into a power first. So we've got 1 plus 4x to the power of minus 2. And now let's start substituting this into the binomial expansion. Think about what our n values are going to be and what our x values are going to be. In this case here, n is the power, so n is going to be minus 2, and we're going to be replacing all of our x's with 4 x's. So all of these x's here get replaced with 4 x's, and the 4 even gets squared when it's in the squared term, and the 4 even gets cubed when it's in the cubed term as well. So substituting the numbers into the binomial expansion, and this is what you'll get. You'll get minus 2 times 4 x, that is minus 2 times minus 3 times 4x squared all over 2. Remember to put brackets around the 4x because the 4 is also going to get squared. Plus minus 2 times minus 3 times minus 4 times 4x cubed. So remember to put brackets around the 4x because the 4 is also going to get cubed. And that's over 6. Simplifying your answer here. And we get 1 minus 8x plus 48x squared minus 256x cubed. Now we have to finish our answer by stating the values for which x is valid. Just a reminder that in this expansion here, we want x to be modulus less than 1. That's going to translate to what we've turned 4x into as well. What we've turned x into. What we've turned x into is 4x now. So in this case here, the x term is 4x, so that's what we're going to put inside our formula to work out the, the, values, um, the, the values of x which are valid for this expansion. We can divide through by 4 as well, that's not going to harm the modulus equality, um, so it's going to be modulus x is less than a quarter. Okay. So this is our answer for the expansion up to the x cubed term, and this is what values of x are valid to substitute into this um, expansion. So this expansion is not perfect. It doesn't work for all values of x. It works for only a limited amount of x values, and it's only an approximation as well, so it's not even um, that great when you've got um, values that are close to a quarter. OK, let's start using um, the potential values of x that we're allowed to substitute into an expression like this to estimate um, values of such as square root of 2. So what we'll do first is we'll um, look for the binomial expansion of 1 minus 2x to the power of a half. Um, that's what the square root symbol is. If you ever see a square root, just turn it into a power of a half. Now when you write out your... Um, by name and expansion, think about what n and x have to equal. In this case here, n is a half, and x is going to be negative 2x. So remember to put the negative 2x inside brackets when you're squaring and you're cubing, because the negative 2 part also has to be squared and cubed. So substituting these all in, we get this expression here, half because of the power, minus 2x because of the x value, and then we're going to subtract 1 from the n value, so half and minus a half, minus 2x squared all over 2. And it's going to be a half, minus a half, minus 3 over 2 from continually subtracting 1 from your uh, n values. And then it's going to be the x value, which is minus 2x, and we're going to cube it. So uh, and all that's over 6. So now get your calculator out and work out the individual terms, and this is what we get. 
So now that we've worked this out, what we can now do is substitute in x equals 0 0.01 into both sides. So in this case here, we're going to get 0 0.98 is equal to this expression here, typed into the calculator. Uh, rewrite to the left-hand side as a fraction, so 98 over 100. And in this case here, you're going to get 0 0.98991495. So how can we use this to estimate the square root of 2? Well, we're going to have to do a little bit of rearranging. Um, let's change the top of this fraction into a third. So this is going to be 7 root 2 now. Remember, square root of 98 can be split up into square root 49 times square root 2. So square root of 49 is 7, and root 2 has to stay there. And this will be over 10 equals the right-hand side. Now we can times by 10 and divide by 7, and that will give us the square root of 2. Divide by 7, and we get 1.41421371, which is very, very close to the actual value of the square root of 2. So that's how you substitute into a binomial expansion to find estimates for things like square root of 2. OK, then let's have a go at this one here where we've got a combined function. We've got 2 plus x on the top of our fraction and square root of 1 plus 5x on the bottom, uh, up to the x squared term. So what we would want to do here is we want to rewrite this as the product of two brackets. Uh, 2 plus x will be the numerator, so that just stays as it is. But then the 1 plus 5x, we're going to have to turn this into a power of minus, because it's on the bottom of a fraction, and a half because it's being square rooted. Now what we'll do is we'll forget about this 2 plus x for now, and we will binomially expand 1 plus 5x to the power of minus a half. So in this case here, this is what we get, and we're just going to expand 1 plus 5x to the minus half, so substituting these values in, we get minus a half times 5x, minus a half times minus 3 halves times 5x squared, all over 2, uh, and then the third, fourth term there as well. Calculate all of these on your calculator, and this is what we get up to x cubed. Now what we're going to do with this x cubed term is times it by the 2 plus x. So let's expand our brackets here. just to get the x squared term, because that's all we're interested in, and we get 65 over 4x squared. So the question was only to find the x squared term. So if you were to write down um, the whole expansion uh, of these two brackets and then just highlight the x squared term, you'd be fine with that as well. You could just do a shortcut and just expand the um, powers of x that you know will give you an x squared term afterwards. The next question is state the range of values for which the expression is valid. Well, what we've done here in the binomial expansion a couple of slides ago was we turned the x from the binomial expansion. Remember, generally it's modulus x is less than 1, but we turned this into a 5x. And when we turned it into a 5x, it changed the values of x we were allowed to substitute into our expression. So it's modulus 5x is less than 1, divide through by 5 and we get x is less than a fifth. OK, so final question here then. So we're going to look at the expansion of 1 plus kx to the power of minus 4, where the coefficient of x squared is 90 and k is greater than 0. So what we can do here is, if we're just looking for the x squared coefficient, <coughs> is we can just highlight the x squared coefficient, or the x squared term, in the binomial expansion. So we'll just grab that part of the binomial expansion and set it equal to 90. We know that n is going to equal minus 4, and we know that x is going to have to be turned into kx. So substituting both of these terms in, x has to turn into kx, and n has to turn into minus 4. So in this case here, we're going to get minus 4 times minus 5, which is going to give us 20. And this is going to be equal to kx squared all over 2. So simplifying this, we get 
positive 20 um, kx squared all over 2. Simplify again and we get positive 10x squared um, k squared x squared. So now what we'll do is we'll set the x squared term equal to 90. So getting rid of the x squareds basically and setting equal to 90. So positives on both sides, apologies. Uh, so divide through by 10 and square roots and we get k is equal to 3. We know that k is not equal to minus 3 because k is a positive value. So k is equal to 3 then. Excellent. So part B now, find the corresponding coefficient to the x cubed term. The word coefficient just means the number that goes in front of the x cubed term. So it's number that goes in front of is, is what the word coefficient means. So pluck out the x cubed term in your binomial expansion. You don't need to do the whole thing. And let's substitute in equal uh, n is equal to minus 4 and k is equal to, so x is equal to 3x now. So in this case here we're going to get minus 4 times minus 5 times minus 6 gives us a triple negative of minus 120 over 27, so times 27x cubed over 6. Simplify your answer here and we get minus 540x <coughs> cubed. So the coefficient here is minus 540. All right then, your turn to have a go at some questions now then. So here's the first one. Try this one out and we'll go through the answers afterwards and then you can have a lot of practice on exercise 4a afterwards. So pause the video, try this one out. Right, okay then, let's go through this answer then. So what we'll have to do first is we'll have to turn f of x into 1 plus x times 1 minus 2x to the power of minus 1. So when we're doing this, uh, we've got 1 minus 2x to the power of minus 1. So substituting this into the binomial expansion of 1 plus xn equals 1 plus nx plus n, n minus 1 x squared over 2 plus n, n minus 1, n minus 2, x cubed over 3 factorial. And it will carry on going. So substituting in the terms now. So in this case here we're going to have n is minus 1. And x in this case is going to turn into minus 2x. I'm just going to deal with the second part of the bracket the second part of the expression first, and then we'll times it by 1 plus x afterwards. So, substituting these terms in, 1 minus 2x to the power of minus 1 is equal to 1 add minus 1 times minus 2x add minus 1 times minus 2 times minus 2x squared all over 2 plus minus 1 times minus 2 times minus 3 times minus 2x squared all over 6. So this is going to be 1 plus 2x um, and then let's work out the third term here. Double negative will make it 2. Cancel that 2 out with the bottom and then it would be a squared negative term on the top so it would be positive 4x squared and then the final fourth term here is going to be a triple negative and then a triple negative here so that's 6 negatives so that will all cancel out so it's definitely positive. The 1 times 2 times 3 will give us 6 and cancel out on the bottom so then we're just going to have 2 cubed, so that's 2x cubed. The final thing that we have to do is to times this by 1 plus x. So 1 plus x times what we've got here. And we'll just expand only the terms that go up to x cubed. If anything goes higher than that, I'll just leave it alone. So in this case here, let's expand the 1 with everything in the right-hand bracket first. That's probably the easiest way of doing it. 1 plus 2x plus 4x squared plus 8x cubed. And then it's going to be plus x plus 2x squared plus 4x cubed 
and the next term is going to be a power of 4, so I don't really need to write that down if I want my answer to be up to the x cubed term. So grouping together like terms now 1, uh, so 2x plus x is 3x, 4x squared plus 2x squared is plus 6x squared, and then um, 8x cubed plus 4x cubed is plus 12x cubed, and that's what we're looking to show. Fantastic. State the range of values for which the expression is valid. Well, in this case here, it's usually modulus x is less than 1, but in this case we turned x into minus 2x. So minus 2x is less than 1. Now we can get rid of the negative symbol because that would just disappear when we modulus anything. And then we can divide through by 2, so x is less than a half. Okay, so that is the values for x for which the expression is valid. Remember, this is only an approximation as well. All right then, well done if you got that. That's pretty good going for a first try on a binomial expansion question. If you didn't, then don't worry. We've seen another question, and you can always rewind the video and have a look at how things are done again. Have lots of practice on exercise 4a though, because it's only going to get harder during the chapter, so make sure you're confident on doing a bog standard binomial expansion question before you move on. Really, it's only substituting into a formula, so I'm sure you'll get it soon. Thanks very much for watching.